What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cal Life here bringing you another Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel video and today we are going to be playing a deck that is exactly no fun for the opponent. That's right, we're playing a no fun deck which is basically Crooked Cook locked in so we could go ahead and see if we can go ahead and get Exodia. Now if you're new to the channel, please do not forget to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe as it does help the channel grow and I would appreciate everything um, from each and every one of you guys. So thank you all so much. Anyways, what are we playing? We're playing uh, all five pieces of Exodia, obviously. And then we are playing one Psy Frame Driver, two Golden Ladybugs, three Swift Scarecrows, three Beautiful uh, Princesses, one Astral Karibo, two Psy Frame Gear Gammas, uh, three Ash Blossoms, um, three Right Hand Sharks, three Buzzsaw Sharks, and then two Kaijus, uh, Gardala. Now for spells, we are playing Regeki, one Harpy's Feather Duster, three Upstar Goblins, one Lightning Storm, three Pot of Prosperity, and then probably, and finally three Peri Race maps. Now, as far as the extra deck, I'm playing number FO Utopic Future, number FO Utopic Draco Future, two uh, Utopias, one Utopia Ray, one Abyss Dweller, one number 106 Giant Hand, uh, number 55 Go 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 Goliath, uh, three Crooked Cooks, and then Time Star Magician, one uh, Baguska, uh, one Primatech Alimentation, and then finally a Zeus. Now, what does this deck do exactly? Well, it's simple. So based on what you get in your hand, uh, you can go ahead and basically get a um, Crooked Cook onto the field. So usually what you wanna do is, if you had a Pot of Prosperity, pop your Pot of Prosperity first. You want to go ahead and see if you can search out a uh, Buzzsaw Shark because then what Buzzsaw Shark would do is it will allow you to go ahead and summon another uh, fish monster that is the same level as it, which is going to be your right hand shark. And when this card is used to go ahead and make an exceed monster onto the field, you basically can go ahead and be indestructible by battle. So you're going to want to go ahead and use these two to go ahead and make your uh, copy of Crooked Crook right here. And if you didn't know why no other cards is on the field, this card is unaffected by other card effects. So therefore, by doing that, you have not only something that cannot be destroyed by battle, but also something that cannot be destroyed by card effects. So do keep that in mind. However, if you aren't able to go ahead and get <clears throat> these two cards in your hand, but you do have yourself a Beautiful Princess, you can use Beautiful Princess to go ahead and special summon one level four fish monster, which is then when you go into the buzzsaw and then you can go into your right hand. Um, if you happen to not get that into your hand, you can also use Piri Rice Map. Piri Rice Map will allow you to go ahead and get a uh, Be Beautiful Princess into your hand. Then you can go ahead on the next turn, since you can't activate its effect during that turn, you can go ahead and activate um, its effect, then get off your combo. So you do have some stalls. You have a Kaiju to go ahead and stall out. Um, basically, if they have a negate on the board, you can go ahead and Kaiju one of their monsters. You have the Swift Scare Scroll where they do, if they attack while this card is in your hand, you can immediately negate the attack and end the battle phase. The Golden Ladybugs is there for every standby phase to get 500 life points. And then you have your Ash Blossoms that do Ash Blossoms things. Now, we do play Astral Karibo because the Astral Karibo is in the deck. When you reveal one number card that's in the deck, so either a Utopia or a, um, <clears throat> or the uh, number 106, you can basically go ahead and reveal one of these number monsters, right? That's literally ranked four. And this Astral Karibo would then become a level four monster, which would then be able to have you set up for a, another level four XC summon if you need to go ahead and uh, find another monster on the field. So let's say you didn't start off with your Buzzsaw Shark, but you did start off with a right hand shark you can go ahead and summon out your right hand shark, activate Astral Karibo's effect while it's in your hand, make it into a level four by revealing one of the level four uh, number monsters. It then can go ahead and make into a Crooked Cook. And what that also does is when this makes a Exceed monster, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effects, which means Crooked Cook is even more indestructible <laughs> because he's already not affected by card effects regardless, but now he's still not um, going to be affected by battle either so do keep that in mind but anyways guys enjoy the video hope you guys have a great one see ya
Okay. So, guys, I want you to know this deck is super toxic, all right? So, anyways, we're going to start off by summoning Buzzsaw Shark, but we get hit with Ash Blossom. And honestly, <laughs> that was probably for the best because I was like thinking, man, I should have probably went with Pot of Prosperity first, right? So, anyways, I decided now to do Pot of Prosperity since now that we can't get Ashed. And guess what we end up getting? A Astro Karibo. Now, if you don't know anything about Astro Karibo, you can go ahead and reveal one number card in your X Seed. And so I reveal the uh, Utopia, which lets us turn them to a level four. And then now we can go into the beautiful looking full art Crooked Cook. Now, Crooked Cook is going to just be sitting here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I have no clue what they're playing, but I was kind of worried that we were going to be hit with a Kaiju. But just in case you guys don't know what Astro Karibo does, basically when this is used to make an Exceed monster, right? We cannot be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effects. So <laughs> we have an indestructible card as he can also not be destroyed by card effects anyways. And he's unaffected by other card effects as long as there's no other cards on our field. So we have just already made this into a stall deck. I decided I'm going to go ahead and attack to find out what he's playing. And he's actually playing a Despian, Despian Tragedy, right? So he's playing Despia. Um, and you guys can see where this is going to go from here. He activates Fullest Burial. He sends out his Tragedy into Grave. He's now able to go ahead and grab himself a Jester. And he, now he's going to go ahead and summon out Jester. I decide I'm going to Ash that. So he cannot grab himself either a Branded Opening or a Theater. But um, to be honest, he actually already had himself a theater in his hand so it really didn't matter but we did at least stop the branded opening play or the branded red he decides to go ahead and make each from there he summons out a creatus not sure why he wouldn't go into the first dark lord but i mean is what it is um he summons out the creatus creatus effect won't affect us because we have no other cards on the field and i'm just gonna go ahead and place in defense and we're gonna stall him out and we're pretty much going to do this <laughs> For up to 17 turns. We're already on turn eight, as you see. I immediately just end. Um, now it's turn nine. Uh it's it's I'm gonna use the pro the Piri Rice map so we can go ahead and grab ourselves a golden ladybug. I know we sacrificed 3900 for um a basically zero attack, zero defense card, but that's okay. Because now as you can see, every standby phase of our turn, we can go ahead and use golden ladybug to draw up 500 life points. I'm then gonna activate a Regeki because we had seven cards in the hand and I need to get rid of one card. I then decided to go ahead and pop Crooked Cook's ability just to go ahead and destroy it. That way he couldn't hit us with anything right here. And by doing that, bang, all his cards go to the grave. He has a max C. Um, he's gonna go ahead and try to negate our effect with Jester. It's not gonna work. We have no cards on our field. He's also gonna go ahead and um, summon out a um, Dramaturge. Dramaturge isn't going to do anything. The Luber is going to now come out. And honestly, there's still nothing he could do. He summons out a Maxi. He knows I'm not special summoning, so it makes sense, right? Tries to go into the Nightmare Unicorn, seeing if he could try to bounce us back. That's not happening either. None of this is happening, man. He then decides, all right, let's go ahead and try to uh, basically make another creator. It's not really sure why, <laughs> but I guess he was just like trying anything. So by doing that, he gets another Kratos into the uh, onto the field, and then he just ends turn because he can't do anything. I draw another card, activate our Golden Ladybug. We get another 500 life points increase. I get rid of the Gamma because we don't need him as we have a card on our field, so he can't be used anyways. Then he decides to go ahead and infuse once again using his Unicorn and Kratos to go ahead and make a Masquerade Blazing Dragon. Now this is actually a smart play because. Uh, if I decide to activate Golden Ladybug, we actually end up losing 100 life points. So I wasn't paying attention at first. So next turn, I'm just going to decide not to go ahead and activate that card. <laughs> that way we, he doesn't do any damage to us regardless. Uh, he then tries to go ahead and hit us with Super Poly. Sends out the call by the grave, right? Makes a Predator Plant Drastovia, Dra Dragostapia. And then he's going to bring back his uh, Masquerade Dragon. He tries to negate our effect, but once again, no cards on the field. So we are completely immune. Forbidden Droplet, immune. Uh, um, what else? Infinite Impertinence, immune. Any card that he can try against us is going to be immune. 
I decided to go ahead and activate Golden Ladybug again because Masquerade's ability won't work. And then I go into Pot of Prosperity and he goes ahead and rages. Now, as you guys can see, what we were going for was Exodia. Um, to be honest, I could have went for a number of plays. I already knew that he used a whole bunch of cards in his extra deck. I could have immediately um, just attacked his Ash Blossom. From attacking the Ash Blossom, I could have then went ahead and made ourselves a Zeus. Then just got rid of the whole field on his field for no reason. Then he would have nothing because his uh, theater would be in the grave and all his his uh, masquerade now would have been banished since it was already brought back from the grave. And we could have just ended the game there because we had another shark in our hand. We could have made um, another Utopia and then went from making Utopia. We could have went into some other place. But anyways, <laughs> this deck is super toxic. Let's go ahead and try to get into another one and let's see if we can pull off Exodia. All right, so we are going to go ahead and start off our turn and we're going to activate the Pot of Prosperity. From activating that, we're going to go ahead and search our deck. And I <laughs> I already see what card I want. I see that we have the Buzzsaw Shark and I think he knows what we were going for as he goes ahead and quits. So that is super unfortunate. Let's go ahead and try another one. All right, now uh, let's see. We are going to activate our upstar goblin from there we summon out the princess with princess we can go ahead and get out the buzzsaw shark activate buzzsaw shark's ability to bring out our <laughs> right hand shark <laughs> and he's just gonna go quick we couldn't even get into the crooked cook let's go ahead and get into the next one uh the this next one's gonna be our final one because i'm telling you guys i've been trying to do this for over an hour and a half they do not let us get even close to summoning crooked cook and if we do they just rage so all right, on to the next. Okay, so we are gonna start off by activating our Golden Ladybug since it's our standby phase, and then immediately go into a Star Goblin. Now, um, I probably should have went into Perry Rest Map, but I decided not to. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you. So, um, anyways, we can't activate Pros Pot of Prosperity because we drew a card. So we noticed that he is playing Drytron. So, bro, like honestly, I haven't seen Drytron since the ban list went to the update to be honest with you so this was interesting anyways he tries to summon off zeta and this is going to be huge by him going for zeta first i'm able to go ahead and instantly negate that so now he can't go ahead and get uh drytron it drytron Metodonius, the ritual spell card that they need to go ahead and get their combos going as well and so i immediately activate golden ladybug on our turn and then i'm going to activate pot of prosperity I toss out six cards into the banner zone and I already see the card that I want to grab, which is going to be the uh, good old shark. Now with Buzzsaw Shark, what we could do is summon him, activate Buzzsaw Shark's effect. That way we can go ahead and get um, a card summoned to a field. He decides to go ahead and Ash Blossom, I mean uh, Maxia, so we Ash Blossom him. And by Ash Blossoming him, we are able to go ahead and negate that which is going to allow us to go ahead and get off two uh, special summons, one being the Buzzsaw and then finally being the Cookie Crook. And honestly, this is where the duel just ends. There's nothing he can do to counter this. So he's going to go off and try to do a lot of combos. He's going to do Drytron Nova. He's going to, <laughs> he's just going to do a whole bunch of things. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, speed, speed it up because there's nothing he can literally do. As you can see, he's gonna get the Alpha, he's gonna get the Zeta, he gets the Metonius Drytron. From getting that, he gets the uh, Diviner. He activates Diviner's ability. He tosses out the Herald of Arc Light, but honestly, this is all a little too late as we already have Crooked Cook on the field. And thanks to Buzzsaw Shark, he cannot be destroyed. So, <laughs> um, Ben 10 comes to the field. He uh, then goes into Beatrice. Beatrice is going to go ahead and toss out a card to the graveyard, which is going to be the big boy Drytron. That way he thinks he's going to be able to remove us from play, but that's not going to happen because I'm not going to play another single card onto the field. So he's just going to be going through a whole bunch. Look at this. He summons out the Drytron Medios Draconides. Thinks he can destroy us. He cannot. He is literally going to be stuck here. It's gonna be our ten, our turn. We're gonna use the Golden Ladybug. He's gonna use Beatrice. He's gonna go ahead and toss out the Natasha. 
and honestly it doesn't mean nothing we just end our turn once again he's going to go ahead and activate the uh metonius drytron get another drytron monster onto the field being the gamma gamma summons out the um zay summons out the which one is this one called again i can't remember the altai's from altai's he's going to then go ahead and summon out the herald of ultimate but like i said guys it is way too late for him to do anything he summons out the Union Carrier now. Union Carrier activates the effect. He grabs himself an Eva. Still nothing. This isn't helping him. There's nothing he can do to get by this. It's just going to be a slow, slow turn. Um, and honestly, I kind of feel bad for him. Like, <laughs> all these URs, and he can't do anything about it. He literally can't do anything. He decides to go ahead and um, bring out another uh, Eva. He powers up his uh his link his link carrier goes into nightmare unicorn nightmare unicorn activates his effect can't do anything he's able to go ahead and use eva's ability get rid of two cards so he could bring out two uh fairy monsters from his deck to his hand he then decides it's time to go into access code talker <laughs> he tries to activate that ability that's not helping him he goes into the divider he tosses out another hero to arc um grabs himself another card tries to banish something to destroy us can't do it he scoops and that is going to be ggs so unfortunately we wasn't able to go in and summon exodia in this video but we at least was able to go ahead and show you how if we ever could get to exodia how we would be able to get to it now the only thing that stops this deck is honestly kaijus <laughs> kaiju stops us man because they just go ahead and summon us or if they have a underworld um uh, underworld uh goddess in their link um in the extra deck they can also go ahead and just use our monster to get rid of it but for the most part most people don't play those cards <laughs> so yeah anyways guys thank you all for tuning in i hope you guys had a wonderful day cal life is signed out enjoy see ya